This is Geeky Not Freaky with Ben. And it's time to get started. This is a Ben Kinney Company promotion. That doesn't even mean anything. If you want to connect with me, hit me up on Twitter at, at, that's the sign, not the two letters, knuckleheads, at Ben Kinney on Twitter. Hit me up right now on the Twitters and let me know that you're here. If we had a hashtag, I'd give it to you, but I don't have one. Brivity. But, brivity. Brivity. Hashtag brivity. Sales pitch. Thanks, Chad. Hey, we got to pay bills on these calls. The easiest way for us to pay bills is to have the people that don't pay us any money but do support us. Uh, special thanks to Happy Grasshoppers. If you're on the call and you're lazy, by the way, I'm lazy, and you would like somebody to work your sphere for you, that means uh, easy free referrals, uh, go to Happy Grasshopper. And if you want a deal, go to happygrasshopper.com forward slash Ben. By the way, I swear on somebody's grave, they don't pay me nothing, although we should discuss it, Dan. Now, the geeks, the freaks, coming to you live, the first person that I'd like to introduce, my co-host for the longest time, by the way, my roommate, one of my best buddies, a real pain in my arse, Mr. Chad Himes. I got to tell you, Chad, you were one ugly kid. Uh, compared to the pictures you got coming, I think I'm the best looking kid you got going on there. <laughs> Chad Hines, where are you from? Ah, uh, from? Wow, that's a long story. Let's just say currently housed in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Mr. Kinney, and hello to everybody, East Coast time. Chad Himes was in Bellingham, but he left me like my other hand, like my ex-wife. <laughs> he just left me sitting here alone. I need, need counseling since he left, but he's a smart guy, and if you guys want to hit him up, hit him up on the Twitters, at Chad Himes, and my staff will send it out to you right now. Oh, and look at this cute kid. I still don't even know how to tie a tie, and this kid was wearing a tie. How old were you, Jeff, on this, on this, uh, in this picture? They're clip-ons, man, or they're already, like, strung up for you, man. I was probably, like, <laughs> seven or eight. I wasn't tying anything. At St. Anthony's, I was in Catholic school. Catholic so school? Catholic school boy up until sixth grade. That's right. This is a great geeky picture. I really appreciate you guys being brave enough to share these pictures with our audience. Jeff, okay. coming to us live from where? I, I'm i from Sussex County, New Jersey. And what Twitter East handle Coast. do you want me to use? At Jeff Lobb. At Jeff Lobb. At Jeff Lobb. All right. And. Okay, wait, next... wait a minute. Oh, hold no, on. No, 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 no talking, Bob. No, no, no talking. <laughs> no talking, Bob. Hey, the prettiest man, yeah. not just in real estate, but the prettiest man <laughs> in real estate, the prettiest man in prison, if you guys know what I mean, <laughs> this, man, this man decided, I said, send me something geeky or something freaky, and he sent me. The cross-dressing Bob Stewart. Mr. Bob and I have traveled all over the world together. We launched Rain Camp. We taught it in 30-something cities in a year. It was crazy. He's one of my good buddies, and he's still the guy that controls Active Rain, who, by the way, used to be a independently owned and operated business, which was acquired by Market Leader, which in the future was acquired by Trulia, which now <laughs> apparently is owned by Zillow. Bob, who in the hell do you work for? That's a good question, man. I, I'll tell you what, I work for the people, Ben Kinney. I work for the people, but I feel like I have to explain this. W if I send you a picture on my cell phone after midnight, Ben, I'd appreciate it if you didn't share that thing with, you know, the thousand people that are on the call here today. I mean, I it, it's both. fair game. <laughs> All right. So there I am. I'm the freaky side of what we're talking about today. Did, did, I, want you to, I want to know, did you do the makeup yourself? No, no, that was uh, that was professionally done. <laughs> I don't want to know why. I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to know. <laughs> I'm so glad. She puts the lotion on her skin. She puts the lotion on her skin. <laughs> All, right, All right, let's get back to business. Hey, if you guys wanna wanna look sexy online, you, you and you want to be successful in real estate, you need a couple sites. You need a buyer site, an IDX site. You need a seller site. I call these the come list me sites. You need a city guide. You need a home valuation. If you have those four tools, you're going to be rich, like like uh, drugs and strippers rich, if you know what I mean, like <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street rich. You're driving your boat around. Uh, if you got those tools in place, 
you can do whatever you want. This is an example of my seller site. This is sellerschallenge.com. My people will tweet out that link to you. And if you want to get one of your own, they'll tell you how to get it. We're going to go fast. If you need a city guide, these city guides are 100% free because vendors pay for them. If you would like a free website that generates me around 10,000 unique visitors a month from LibBellingham.com alone, then you should check out our city guides. But I don't have time to talk about it today. You know why? Because i got three other geeks on the line. single easiest tool you've ever seen to generate uh, seller leads right now is Brivity Valuations. Brivity Valuations rock. Here's what happens. Somebody goes to your valuation site, mindsubmitmyhome.com. They type in an address, hit hit submit, and they get popped up to a lead form. But already, Bob, listen to this. The right. first time they type in that address screen and they hit submit, you're already emailed a lead that somebody searched for that address. Who do you think the person that typed that address in was? Um, Ex-wife. I don't know. <laughs> Probably the person that owns the property. Oh, get out. You know what I mean, right? So somebody. Even if they don't fill out the next form where they ask for their name and email and phone number, you still know that somebody searched for that address. It's one of the things that makes us unique, and it's one of the things that make your farming efforts, your radio, your pay-per-click, your Facebook ads, all those sort of things work and pay you better than anybody else's valuation site. Everybody else is ripping us off right now. Everybody has a valuation site, but ours is the best, I promise. If you want Brivity Valuations, they'll send you out the link for it. And I'll tell you what, if you have it already or if you sign up on this call, I'll give you a copy of the emails to send to your sphere, the letter to spend, send to your neighborhood, copy of some Facebook ads and uh, pay-per-click ads that you can actually do to start generating leads uh, today for it. But that's a short time offer. Okay, Brivity, that's the real reason we're here. Here, here. Brivity helps you manage your business. We say that it does three things, manage, market, and communicate. At Brivity, we do the simple things. We create a virtual tour for your properties, a single property web page. You don't have to pay for that junk from somebody else anymore. Boom! We do task management. If you ever want to organize your business or organize your team, bam! Everything is done. You see a list of everything that needs to get done every day when you log in. And every time one of those boxes gets checked, it sends an email to your clients letting them know that you just completed this and 17 other tasks. It's called transparency because it, com it, it, it communicates everything that you do. Now, it includes things like showing feedback, lets the sellers know how the showings went. Every time you do showing feedback, they get email. This is all cool. They get their own customized page, like their own Facebook page. They get to log in and see everything you've done for the property, all the advertising, all the tasks, all the showings, all that sort of stuff. This is really awesome. It's a listing marketing system because we created these tools that allowed you to take each one of your listings and with one click post them to Facebook, post them to Twitter, Pinterest, Google+, Craigslist, Active Rain. Are you kidding? You get to cancel like five or six different services and we have some awesome CRM tools, which includes the ability to work your database with my sphere plan, follow up with leads or with my lead plans, work everybody in your database. We're launching uh, click to call, bulk emails, a lot of advanced sphere tools in the next 30 ish days. Ken will probably kill me, but you know, soon it's going to rock. You're going to get rid of everything else in your business. But now we're time to get freaky. We're going to get freaky because I've already decided that these guys are too out of control. Chad Himes. Oh, thank oh God, God. Facebook's back. Oh, Facebook's back. <laughs> oh, everybody, everybody, you can you can log off the webinar now. I knew that <laughs> the reason here was because Facebook was actually down. So thanks. Thanks for listening to me. Chad Himes, we're going to talk ben about Kenny. social. You, social, you sent me some tips. I did. What in, the, what in the heck should I focus on? You should focus on something. That's that's the challenge, you know. We see that in realtors. You've seen it in people all the time. We see it in people in every industry. Heck, I mean, everyone wants to be everything. Right? They want to be a jack of all trades. No, you got to be a specialist. You got to be an expert. So what we're finding is we're finding too many people. They're attempting to have an account on Facebook, on Twitter, on Pinterest, on Instagram, on something that I don't even know. On on MySpace still that they're using. On Friendster that they're still running around with. On all these apps that are out there, and all these social networking sites that are out there, and they're not specializing in one or two of them that actually makes sense because the audience that they're looking for and the audience they're talking to is on that platform. People have to start specializing. Uh, you know what you know what do they call people that do a whole bunch of things but they aren't, aren't good at any of them? You know Realtors? what they call that, Chad? What? Uh, 
That's the wrong answer, no. right? <laughs> and they call them the cream of the crap. They're the best of the worst. They aren't doing anything great, and I agree with you. we got to pick one. So if, if you were in real estate, what would you pick? If I were in real estate right now, I'd be picking Facebook still. Uh, doesn't go down that often. Just had that experience happening, though. Gives us the best areas to engage with most people that are in the buying age group. So if I had to pick one of the social networks that I was going to focus on, Facebook would be that one network. Interesting. And, and funny enough, there's other people on the call that – Bob, would you pick something else? No. I, I mean – everybody's there, you know. Not only is the buying age group there, you've got all these baby boomers that are in there that are that are going to be selling, uh, downsizing at some point soon. Absolutely Facebook. Um, and I would make sure that I was just proficient and an expert in my ability to market myself on Facebook before I ever thought about going off to the next one or the one after that. You know, uh, Jeff, what would you do? Facebook? I would actually flip the switch on Facebook. I would use it for I would use Facebook, but I would use it for the other reason is all the people that I've done business with and stayed in touch with them because we really stink keeping in touch with people after the sale. And we just drip on people, and dripping on people makes me nuts. It's annoying. So if we can actually stay involved in their lives after the sale, it's one way to do it. And you might actually get the listing back five years from now. Great point, Jeff. So, Great point. So for me, I, been... I, del I deleted Facebook because I'm antisocial. I would use like LinkedIn or something. Hey, one of you three guys has like a TV on in the background. It sounds like sounds yeah, like I got it. dying. Sorry. What's up, Bob? Hey, turn off. Bob was figuring off. out SEO. He was watching those simple videos. You know, SpongeBob does SEO. <laughs> turn off the prices right, please. <laughs> turn off the prices right. Okay, Chad. All right, we figured out. You got to focus on one thing. Got to focus on one but, thing. But, ben Kinney, here's what I'm I want to talk to you about. Here's what I want to talk to you about, and yes, I will call you out right here on this webinar in front of everybody. People have got to stop auto-posting. They have got to stop posting on Facebook and then using things like if this, then that, or whatever they've automatically done in the background that when they post on Facebook, it shows up on Twitter, it shows up on Instagram, it shows up on Pinterest, it shows up on, it shows on, it shows up on, it shows up on. Come on, people. Every social platform is a different language. You don't speak German to a guy in China. You don't speak Spanish to a guy in, you know, Romania. I don't know. Maybe they speak Spanish in Romania. I'm not sure. you got to speak the language of where you are. Twitter allows 140 characters, uses hashtags, and it's okay to shorten words. That's acceptable. On Facebook, you just look like a moron. On Instagram, you speak in hashtags. It's hashtag, 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 hashtag. On Facebook, again, you now look like a moron with the picture with the hashtags all over the place. Stop linking your accounts and letting them auto-post from one to another like my friend Ben Kinney likes to do from his business page and like my wonderful friend Bob does to show off his amazing two-inch vertical yesterday. Well, you know, I, so I'll, <laughs> I'll do this a lot from Instagram to Facebook. That's about the only place that I'll be because – you know, I share something on Instagram, I want to kick it over to Facebook, so I am absolutely guilty of this, but in terms of, it, that's a conscious decision, right? I'm not just tying everything together and then in, in one stroke having this stuff sent out everywhere. I mean, I am thinking about it a little bit, you know what just I, a little. Chad, i got to defend myself here for a second. See, somebody, it was probably you, set up so my fan page automatically posted to Twitter back in the beginning when that was cool. And I deleted yeah. Facebook, so I have no way to change it. So who on this call right now has access to my fan page? <laughs> so, so basically everybody on this call, when you message the fan page, guess who you're really talking to is what he just told you. <laughs> well done. Hey, Chad. <laughs> you want to edit that part out? You're a, yeah, I'm moving on, please. Uh, <laughs> you're a smart guy, but what in the heck does – Affinity score multiplied times weight for this edge times time decay fat. What what are you All talking right. about? All right. You've heard the term edge rank. A lot of people out there have heard it. Some of the people understand it. Some people even follow what's going on with it as it changes regularly. If Facebook's the place you're going to choose, and as – We've all, most of us, agreed Facebook's probably the right place, whether it's for marketing purposes, whether it's for follow-up with your people. The world population is just over 7 billion, and 1 billion are on Facebook, just so you understand the numbers of how powerful that program is. EdgeRank determines what you see. 
because there is no way they could just filter everything. You miss 90% of the stuff that happens in the world of Twitter because it goes by so fast on your feed. Facebook does what's called edge rank. Now it takes every single posting and does an equation between every posting and every user on Facebook. So it decides, Ben, if you and I have a strong affinity level, you're more likely to see it. Yet if Jeff and I don't engage that often, he's not as likely to see it. If Bob and I engage a little bit, he's sometimes likely to see it. Then it's the weight of the posting. It matters whether you're using photos, whether you're using links, whether you're using just text, whether you're using the different kinds of postings that you can do if you've got a video or something along those lines because what you normally engage with, you will be more likely to see. So Ben, if you like to watch videos, but if Jeff likes to click on the links and if Bob just likes to click on pictures, if I were to post a link, Jeff's more likely to actually see it in the whole equation of how this all works. So edge rank is telling you, you have to remember to use everything that's on Facebook. You can't just post selfies all day long. Alby Voss, give him a prize. I threw his name out there. You can't just post selfies all day long. You can't just post links all day long. You can't just type and never put a photo. You've got to remember to use edge rank so you are engaging with as many of your connections on Facebook as possible at once. You know, you know I, I, I think... You know, Chad and I stumbled across this a long time ago when we were educating ourselves. But basically what I got from this, Chad, was there's certain things that I could do to increase the probability that somebody else that has the, the possibility of using me for real estate-related services would see my Facebook post. What's, what's one thing I should do to, to increase the probability that these people will see my stuff? It's going to depend on the people and how they've engaged with you in the past. So the more people you are connected with on Facebook and the more often you are posting and the more likely you post the things they like to engage with, the more likely they're going to see it. And you should be so, tagging them in it if you can. So I, I need to be commenting on their stuff and I Correct, need to get them to com comment on my stuff? Correct, because every time I comment on something that Bob posts, it increases our affinity a little bit. So now not only am I more likely to see Bob's things, he's more likely to start seeing my things. Which, which we found out in the beginning, the highest way to get responses was to post things that, were, that made people want to like it and ask questions to get them to respond to us. And to stalk right. people that we want to have seeing our stuff, because if I stalk someone like Bob for long enough and engage and like and things, he'll start seeing my things more regularly. Andy Levine just asked the question, does this edge rank also work in relationship to uh, fan page posts? Uh, yes, and we'll talk about fan page posts as we keep going through some of the social tips we're going to want to talk about, because we're going to bring some interesting fan page post information they're going to want to hear. Okay. So, so wait for this edge type. I want to slow down on this for a second. So yep. wait for this edge type is what type of content it is and what Correct. type of inter interaction it is. Correct. And this is going to be your posting. Factor. This is going to be you've just and put text, you've put a link, you've put a photo, you've put a video. It's going to be that you've commented on something. So that's why, folks, you'll sometimes see that someone that you're not connected with, their photo showed up because such and such commented on their photo and Facebook thinks that means it's that important to you that since Bob commented on Chad's photo and you're that good of a friend with Bob, even though you're not connected with Chad, you should still see Chad's photo. That's the weight and how it's all engaging in everything that's happening out there. And Time Decay just says, hey, that, that post has, has a lifespan that is going to stay in front of people. And it it starts off in front of everybody and it, and it just fades off into the horizon. So Correct. Saying that, we should we should post a certain time of day. You should post often. Uh, certain times a day, yeah, there are better times of the day, but the key is going to be to post more than once a day. Okay. And and if I had to post three times a day, what time would it be? Uh, I personally, if I actually had a specific time I was setting at, I would post about 8:30 in the morning. I'd post about 11:45, and I'd post about 7:15 p.m. I'd post before they started work as they were looking at Facebook. If they're in their car driving or at their office, I would post around lunch when they're taking their break and grabbing Facebook. And then I would post what we call, have always called, Ben, the wine hour because that's when the people are kicking back, pulling out their laptop, having a drink, having their iPad, whatever it is when the kids are finally out of their way. So I would post in my time zone for those times of day. I get it. I get it. So three times a day, try to get them when they're drunk, try to get them when they're waking up, and try to get them when they're taking breaks at work. Absolutely. Well, cool. All right. 
A posting menu. I don't even know what you mean by this, dude. Well, that's good. Uh, a posting menu. Uh, many of the people that are on this call, for example, they can type into the chat box for you. Every Monday, I post something. So my question to them is, do they know what I post every Monday? Uh, and I'm sure you're getting answers from plenty of them who know that Monday is always, in my world, Movie Monday. So a posting menu is like going to your favorite restaurant. If you go to TGI Fridays, Chili's, your local bar, whatever it is, you know that Monday's wing night, Tuesday's quesadilla night, Wednesday's dollar beer night, whatever it is, you need to create a posting menu for yourself for Facebook. Also, you need to have ideas. Yeah. I think, Chad, one of the reasons that's so important is it takes out the guesswork of what am I going to post today or... Amen, Bob. Right? Amen. If yeah. I... It's just a repeatable action. I just know I gotta, I gotta, you know, maybe tweak a little bit, or but I, I don't have to just come up with a new idea every day. Correct. And if you take three days a week or four days a week that you have a menu for, so you know that today I'm going to post about this. And folks, it can be, hey, today I'm going to post the blog that I wrote when Bob talks to us about SEO stuff. So it, you can say that every Wednesday you're going to post your blog. That's fine. It's now something that you've committed to. You can say that every Friday you're going to post a Freaky Friday statistic about your real estate in your area. That's fine, whatever it's going to be for you. But it should be something that becomes consistent, something you can always count on, something you don't have to think about, something your people can rely on. It'll make your life easier using social networks, whichever one you use, because you'll know what you should be talking about on any given day. Hey, Chad. Yeah, Chad. So what's your opinion on this? this? I see a lot of our social gurus out there doing this kind of stuff, and I just want your opinion. Um, so they post these random, random questions. What's the first thing that comes to mind when I say the word blue? And then there's a whole bunch of little chitter-chatter and stuff like that. Honest opinion. I have mine. I'd like to know yours. Honest opinion, if, if I could reach through my computer screen and just smack them around, I probably would. Um, we're on the same page with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you're asking a question, there should be a reason for it. Now, if I were doing some field research, Jeff, and I were going to do a new logo design, and, and Ben and I were sitting there, and we've been talking about something, and we said, hey, what do people think when they hear the number five? Because we know the number five needs to be into this webinar, and we want to come up with the right title. Or, you know, I'm going to do blue as my color, yet I need something from you guys. Okay, tell me a little bit more. Don't just put, you know, what do you think of when you see blue? Um, give me a little bit more. Let me know why I'm helping you. It's all about learning about people. The more you can learn about other people, the more engaged they're going to want to be with you. Jack, should I have a business page? No. So why? That, no, you shouldn't. Uh, business pages right now have fallen like a rock. Okay, right now what you're seeing for business pages is six percent exposure rate, which means for every 100 fans you have on a business page, maybe six of them see something that you've posted. You're not getting the engagement you want on your business page because Facebook has gone pay to play. So the only way you're getting your postings out there that make sense on a business page is that you're having to post and then you're having to boost that post and spend the money to get that out there in front of everybody. If you do not have a business page today, you do not need to waste the time going to create one. If you have a business page today and you're not getting any engagement, more than likely, walk away. Here would be, I, well, I have one one reason why you would want a business Don't page. Don't say it yet, because that's going to be the next point. Okay. <laughs> All right. Don't say I, it, because it's going to be number six, the, Bob. I didn't review the homework. My bad. It's going to be Let's number go to six. number six and see so we can argue this stuff out. All right. All right. Should you delete your business page? No. You should walk away from your postings on your business page and engaging with your business page, yet you cannot run advertising on Facebook if you do not have a business page. Ding, 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 ding. Thank you very much. You should still be running a business page for the sense of being able to have the right to promote advertising on Facebook, target advertising to promote your blogs, your landing pages, your, uh, you know, your uh, property websites that Ben's got for you, all those things, you should be using Facebook advertising for that and you have to have a business page to make that happen. So that's the only reason not to delete a business page. Here's why I think people get confused on this or, or maybe there's some consternation over it because you, you hear, I hear the gurus, Jeff brought them up earlier, saying things like, uh, you know, if you post your business stuff to your personal page, it's in Facebook's guidelines that they could take you down, right? Like. If you if all you did all day every day was post about your business on your personal page, maybe that would happen, right? 
but the, you're, you're not doing that, right? You're, you're, you're sprinkling in some of the stuff about your business in terms of the rest of your life. Correct. And Bob, that's why we, we, we've called, I've never called myself a social media guru. I will never attempt to call myself a social media guru. I'm a voice of reason. Uh, so I'm going to tell people what really works, what doesn't work. It's one of the things Ben and I agreed on years ago that we weren't going to BS people. We were just going to say, do this, this is why, or don't do this, and this is why. So it's a voice of reason to it. You should remember the 80-20 rule that's taught in so many places in the world today, business, everything. 80-20 on social networks. I don't care what network you're on, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, whether it's LinkedIn. 80% of the stuff should be you. 20% of the stuff should be business not hey I just listed this house but business because if you don't tell people what you do for a living they're going to assume you're unemployed so your pictures your other information have to still tie in and you have to still share that stuff yet you've got to share you as well you can't just post business 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 but you shouldn't be so doing saying, it on a business you're saying, page you're saying don't delete it don't delete it just stop using it stop posting on it unless you're ready to spend the money to boost the postings to make sure that people are seeing it otherwise you're wasting your money you're better off putting that into ads so I, I agree with Chad that I don't believe that that posts from your business page work very well. I do believe that there's a purpose for having them, some of which I think Bob's going to talk about. Um, other things would be like if you want to do a lot of shameless real estate promotion and you don't want to bother your database, but you want to make your sellers and your clients happy, that's a good place to do it. Or if you want to send um, Facebook ads to a fan page, to get more likes, to get more contacts, or to uh, uh, like tell you what, if you guys, if you guys end up having, if you have a brevity valuation site or you sign up for one, I'll give you the Facebook plugin for free, which allows you to have the home valuation site on your on your fan page, uh, as long as my developers don't kill me today. But that, that's what I'm going to do. I don't care. I'll I'll, I'll take the beating. Uh, Chad. Yes, Ben. The next question. Next question hashtag, is a hashtag. Hashtag. Which I absolutely. would like you to know that hash is legal in Washington and Colorado. <laughs> Excellent. I, I, I guess I left too soon. Uh, hashtags. <laughs> you need a hashtag, folks. This isn't difficult. It doesn't take days to create a hashtag. Come up with a hashtag and start using it regularly. If you're on Twitter, for example, don't change hashtags every time you're doing something. Right? Ben does a webinar. It's hashtag brevity. It's not hashtag this webinar and hashtag that webinar and hashtag this webinar. Have a constant theme. If you're a realtor in a certain town, it should be life in Vegas. That should be your hashtag if you live in Vegas. It should be you know, real estate ATL for someone who's out here in Atlanta. Get a hashtag that you're always using, whether it's now personal. Anything you're tweeting about, anything you're even Facebook posting about that would tie into it, make sure that hashtag gets attached to it so people can start following conversations because hashtags are indexable on all the different social media sites now. Limit them. Don't talk in hashtags unless you're on Instagram. Every other platform should never have more than two hashtags in any posting. And hashtags yeah, are not sarcasm. About... They're not sarcasm. Ha hashtag shut up. Uh, Jeff, what, what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, um, I like the sarcastic hashtags, actually. It's kind of a... It's kind of the... <laughs> um, no, he's right. You know, the, you know where there's a really important place for a hashtag, too? In um, one of the sessions we did a couple weeks ago, we talked about... Create a unique hashtag for your pictures and photos that, let's say, are real estate listing related. So let's say it's Jeff's, hashtag Jeff's listings, something that no one else is going to have, or theoretically. Make a unique one so that when you're on the fly and you got your iPad and somebody goes, oh, I'd love to see some of your listings, you just go to your Instagram, pull up your hashtag Jeff's listings, and boom, the whole portfolio comes up all in one dash, you know, nice display. And it's like a it's like an artist's portfolio, you know. So that's why you make it. So you pull stuff up on the fly too. I'm kind of I'm kind of social media stupid and hashtag ignorant. What sites should I be using hashtags on? You can use them on all of them now. Instagram is all about hashtags. That's the only way you actually really have conversation on Instagram. It should be continuous hashtags. Twitter, of course, that's where the hashtag really got its life and got going and now Facebook does index hashtags so of the three major social networks and even Google Plus which won't be around much longer uh, of the major social <laughs> networks hashtags work and hashtags index conversation so you should use them on all you should just limit your use of them oh cool I get it hey let's talk about images like yeah this. that's a quick easy awesome one use them you guys sent me yeah <laughs> you should use them easy more than 80% of the world's population are visual. 
So because of that, you should be using pictures. So you should use pictures on Facebook, obviously on Instagram, that's what it's all about. You should be using pictures on Twitter. You should be using pictures anywhere and everywhere you can when you're posting. Just remember the edge rank, don't only use pictures. As one of the best, let me give one of the best examples I've seen of pictures. A guy, there's a guy named Sheldon Neal. He's a, an agent of Three Max in New Jersey. And every time he sells a house, he posts a picture of him with his, his people out in front of their new house. And somewhere in the background, he's holding a just sold sign. He might Brilliant. be in the window, he might be on the roof. But, but it's become this very consistent kind of branding thing. That, that he, and he gets a ton of engagement on him. It's a great idea. Brilliant. A B so, testing. If you're, on the call, if you're on the call today, Jeff Stewart, thank you for being the first one to respond. What is it that that I mean below? What what, what did I do there? <laughs> type, uh, type that in. Type that in right now. Um, I, right. I'm going to say. Uh, Albie got it. Albie I got think it. it's it's B A B A though. Is it Commando? Which game is it from? It's commando. I'll kill you. Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Giovanni Bam! got it. Adam got it. It's all guys. Any girls know what the answer is? Yeah, but for what game? I know what it is, but for what game? Come on. What do you mean for what game? Chad, which one was up, up, down, down, left, left, right, left, right, BA? Come on, which one? What'd that give you? It actually, it actually ends with select start. Uh, Contra, dude. Contra. Contra, Contra that's code. what I meant. That's Contra. It is the Contra code. I'm pretty I'm sure this man. worked on about 40 <laughs> original Nintendo <laughs> games. I think oh, it's still no way. I think it's still <laughs> the Contra so, code. Um, Look it up on Wikipedia. All right, awesome. A-B All testing. Right. What a am I doing? A B testing, you are testing everything back and forth. So I mean if you've got a posting about like what Bob was just talking about, for example, this guy who's posting pictures of himself, I'd A B test that. I'd post it with a link to a landing page to see the pictures. I would post it with the picture. So the posting is almost the exact same, one thing different. Start to see what works better with my network and my people. If I'm running a an ad on Facebook, for example, I'm gonna change just one thing. I might change that I'm targeting men or I'm targeting women or I'm targeting this age group or that age group. Just change one thing in an ad, just change one thing in a posting to start learning what your people like best. Don't rewrite a whole thing and start all over thinking that you're learning anything. Change one thing in A-B test. It's easy to do on social networking very quickly. Well, what I like about <clears throat> Twitter is you can say things all day long and nobody ever listens. But I can write the same post five times that day and nobody's going to really care. Some people are going to respond to one, some people are going to respond to the other. So I like that idea for Twitter and that sort of stuff. But I also love it for like Facebook ads and pay-per-click ads. Running, running ads that change to see which one gets the highest click-through. Yep, and now, that's a great Chad, use, Ben. Great use. Uh, so when you're doing your tw your tweet your tweet your tweets, ugh, use a different <coughs> hashtag as you're posting throughout the day. Use different little things like that. Reword it in just a certain way so that you're A/B testing to see which one learns better. Because you're right, no one notices that you posted the same thing five times. They only engage with it once. And the last tip I'm going to give everybody so that we can move on to what Bob's got to share with us is content. It's all about content. And if you are not creating good content, stop posting at all. Just walk away. You know, if you're posting Coke or Pepsi and that's your most exciting posting that you've got on Facebook, it's time to delete your Facebook account. Oh wait, someone did that. Okay, so. Some of you will get what I just said. It's got to be about content because it's the most important thing nowadays. It's going to be if you're sharing blog links, Bob's going to talk to you about content. And of course, your social content needs to be valuable. We don't care about your peanut butter and jelly sandwich, so don't post it if it's not worth people reading. So if you guys are on the call today, how are we doing so far? I mean, imagine having these three guys on one call. I, I feel so lucky. I'm luckier than a guy that picks his nose and comes out with a cupcake. That's how lucky <laughs> I am. Ben today. Kinney's dream, by the way, right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys for hitting that up in the chat <laughs> box. Bob Stewart, <clears throat> my cross-dressing, amazing, beautiful friend. <clears throat> uh, why and, and what in the heck is SEO? Uh, why is, I guess why SEO, well SEO search engine optimization, right? It's, it's our ability to get in front of people who are querying things online um, that we might not otherwise know. And I always look at social as, as Lynn Jeff said it earlier, as this kind of arena to develop relationships with the people I have. There's some things like Facebook advertising where I can reach people I don't know. But for me, SEO is about reaching people I don't know or that don't know me. Uh, I don't think any any website in the world has ever taught one industry more about SEO than Active Rain. I would give you guys little golf claps all day long because you guys 
you guys you guys really educated and did it. And what what the amazing thing was is I, I think you guys kind of learned from having agents figure it out. Absolutely. Like were, I mean, the, the stuff that I've I've taught over the years has been things where somebody went out and you know we kind of said, hey, maybe this would work, and they went out and did it a lot to a very high degree, and then we come back and say, okay, let's show you what they they're doing, right? So yeah, I mean, it's it's been all our members kind of figuring this stuff out, and us just kind of. Um, pulling all the information together and turning it back around and, and sharing it with other people. So, <clears throat> what do we write about? Okay, so if if your aim is to get in front of buyers and sellers, which I think most of your aims would be, the, there's a couple of things I would write about. The first thing I would write about would be either condo complexes or subdivisions in my marketplace. And I've been talking about this for a number of years, but it's amazing to me that still today in a lot of our markets, there's not kind of this coverage, right, this, this content at that real specific level where I'm writing about, you know, a specific condo building in my marketplace or where I'm writing about a specific subdivision in my marketplace. So that would be the, the first thing. If I was a real estate agent and I was thinking about starting a blog, right, I was going to start creating pages on my website it, with an attempt to drive traffic to me, I would be writing about those specific things in my marketplace, maybe a townhome complex or a condo complex or a subdivision. The second thing I would be writing about then would be specific types of properties that, that I know people in my market might be interested in or people moving into my market might be interested in. And I always share this story, Ben. There was when we did rain camp in Dallas, I'm sure you'll remember this, that tornado had come through the night before. And so when we got up on stage the next day, and by the way, they don't have basements in, in really any of the buildings in Dallas or most of the homes because it's built on clay, but I didn't know this. And so when the tornado came through and our hotel is telling us to get in this room in the middle on the first floor, I'm thinking, where's the basement at? Like, I've never been around a tornado. This is very scary. Anyway, we get up on stage the next day, and I basically say to the crowd, you know, if I was moving here because of the experience we'd had last night, I might be going online and looking for homes for sale with a basement in Dallas and there was this one lady and I can picture her face she sticks her hand up and she says we don't have homes for sale with basements because we don't have basements well one guy in the audience his name's Tom Branch he's a, become a really good friend of mine over the years um, he wrote the post while we're sitting there in rain camp he wrote the post about homes for sale with a basement in Dallas and the post basically said hey we don't have a lot of these Dallas is built on clay you know um, Whatever he said, a friend of mine was here, and blah, blah, blah. And then he put a link to his website for the homes in Dallas with a basement. And there's only, like, at any given time, like 20 or 30 houses in all of the Dallas area that, that have a basement. But he continues. Every time I see that guy, he tells me that post is the most traffic post on his website. Right? It's writing about some real specific type of property. Maybe it's a three-bedroom condo in downtown Seattle or right? these very specific types of properties. So those would be what I would be writing about if I was just getting started, or even if I've been blogging for a long time, but I'd never covered those kinds of specific things. So when we, when you and I were teaching, we would say, hey, we're going to write this post this morning, and by the end of the day, we were number one, number two, number three on Google, just from that one blog post. And that was the power that, that you guys at Active Rain brought us. So we're going to talk about local SEO and we're going to start with Google local business page. Tell me about that, why I should have it. So I, I did this panel recently with uh, some really smart guys, Morgan Carey and Rivers Pierce and Sam DeBoer. These are some of the best SEO guys in the real estate industry. And one of the things that Rivers Pierce, and he's uh, kind of in charge of SEO for Boomtown, but one of the things that Rivers said during that, that call was a lot of agents kind of miss the, the simple SEO strategies and local SEO is one of the simple strategies so setting up a Google local business page is a big deal and you should all do it now you have to have an actual physical address and what starts to happen is as you build that business page out that kind of gives Google just the the foundation for who you are and where you are and so having that you know just go go Google you know setting up a Google local business page if you haven't done this already get that done because this is really the starting point for your ability to rank in, in this local SEO environment this idea that people are on their smartphones um, you know, and, and Google knows where they're at or even as they sit we sit at our computers Google knows where we're at this Google local business page will set the foundation for for your ability to rank kind of in local SEO so that brings us to citations. 
because I think it's kind of that's like one of the places that you you kind of consider a citation. What in the heck is so citation. citations is this idea that that Google is looking for a certain set of information about you, so they're, they're like your name, right? Your name needs to kind of show up the same in a lot of different locations. And so if you're doing things like, let's say on your Active Brain blog, you have you know CRS, GIA, RWC, well, whatever, and, and you have a bunch of these, and then on Google Plus, you're not doing the same thing. It's this idea that. When Google looks at you in these different places, they see the same thing. So your name, right? Make sure your name is consistent. I see some of you guys like you're Bob Stewart Realtor in Seattle on Facebook, but you're not that on Active Rain or you're not that on your Google Plus page, right? Then your address, right? Is your address consistent across? And some of us have set up profiles here and there and everywhere, and, and it's not consistent. The third thing are phone numbers, right? Just these basic kind of things that when Google looks out there and they see Bob Stewart, they see Active Rain, they see you know my phone number, they, they know it's the same guy that's over here on LinkedIn, it's the same guy that's over here on my Zillow profile, it's the same guy that's over here on my Trulia profile, and they start to look at these citations, right, where I show up somewhere. Now where this really gets interesting is when you're not on your own web properties, right, so if, let's say that I I was lucky enough to get picked up to write for Inman, or I got an article published on the Truly a Pro blog, or I had an article published somewhere else. I want to make sure those citations stay consistent, so that as Google looks out there, right, they see this the same person from place to place to place to place. You know, Bob, when you and I were teaching uh, SEO, and Chad and I were teaching SEO and IMSD, we spent a lot of time talking about link building. And getting one-way links to us and that sort of stuff. Citations are really the links of the future, but they aren't even links, right? Right. I mean, they're just they're just me being out there um, demonstrating my expertise wherever it is. And I think we've got one. Go to the next. What's the next one? Reviews. Okay. So if you guys right now are not, <laughs> I. You know, Ben, maybe you could answer this. How do you guys go about getting uh, reviews? Because I think it's a pretty disjointed process, right? I try to get them to review me on my Google local page. I try to get them to review me on Zillow. I try to get them to review me on Truly. And there might be 10 different places that I would try to get them to review me, and it's tough. So maybe the first thing I would say is you guys think about some way that you can consistently get your clients after a transaction closes to give you a review. And that might be as simple as sending them an email a week or two weeks after with links to the six different places you'd like them to review and just a heartfelt, hey, you know, this would mean a lot to me if you would go out and review me. But what, what I believe is starting to occur in SEO is Google is starting to look out into the real world Right, this idea that there's real people out there reviewing you, and they're starting to compile these reviews from all these different places. So, you know, they know that when you, the reviews you have on your Zillow profile are reviews, they know that the reviews you have in all of these different locations are review. Right, there's this thing called uh, Schema.org markup tags that sites like Zillow or Trulia or Active Rain or Yelp or what are using to, to let Google know, hey, this, this piece of the page right here is a review. And what Google's doing is they're going out and they're finding all of those reviews and those things become citations for you, right? They become somebody else saying, this person did a good job. And, and I really believe that SEO moving forward is going to be a lot more about what do, do real people think about you and, and what kind of credibility do you have in the real world and that will start to transpire into how you know in the ability of my content to rank well, you know I, I I need to have each one of these guys back to do a full hour with them to get into this more because citations are important and, and I'll do that I'll schedule each one of these guys for a full call or or most of one, so we can we can dig into this. But I think getting reviews are important. You know, we're using Real Satisfied to do it. Also, uh, making sure our Zillow reviews are up there, so that you know, if you do any advertising on Zillow, they don't it doesn't work very well if you don't have a lot of client reviews. So you got to keep chipping away at that for sure. So Google authorship, th this is cool. So how do I set it up? How do I tie all the content, all my content back to it, and oh, clearinghouse? What? Okay, so Ch Chad said, you know, Google Plus, like, it's going to be going away. Look, I, I believe that 
So there's this concept of Google authorship, which essentially means you can go out and set your site up. It could be your WordPress site, your Active Rain blog, wherever you're creating content, your own website, to tell Google that, hey, I'm the, I'm the person that owns this website. And what that allows you to do then is, as you go around the internet and you, you maybe write on an Inman thing or you, you, you do a guest blog post on your lender's blog or, or, where, or, or even if you were to get like interviewed in a local newspaper or maybe you made it on the news or whatever it is, your Google Plus page becomes kind of this clearinghouse for you to, to tie all of the citations, all of the things happening out there about you on the internet in, back into one place. And so, I, I, Ben, I gave you a link, but I'm not sure, and I can't, I'll, I'll think about it when Jeff's going here, um, where, where I talk about how to actually do this, but essentially the idea is, let's show Google everything about us and why we're an expert. So if I got, if I got, you know, um, I got cited in a local newspaper article about the real estate market and there was a quote in there for me, that's something that I would want to show to Google. I would want to expose that to them to let them know, hey, I'm, I don't just think I'm an expert, like the Seattle Times thinks that I'm an expert. So Google authorship, you guys, you can Google, right? How to set up Google authorship on my WordPress, how to set it up wherever. Um, but this idea that your Google Plus profile becomes then this clearinghouse for just anything you've written, all of the content you've created, all of the citations that are out there about you, all the places you have reviews, all of your profiles, right? Ben's gonna have it on Zillow and Trulia and Keller Williams and all these places that show the search engine that Ben Kinney is an expert in real estate in Bellingham. If he gets quoted by the Bellingham Herald, he's going to expose that to them. If he's on the news, he's going to share that video on his on his Google Plus page, and all of these things are going to start to tie back to Ben as being this expert in Bellingham and give him an ability when he writes something later for that content to potentially rank higher in the search engines. Yeah. Uh, what's the clearinghouse? The clearinghouse just means that. Google that that's the place where you put everything to let Google know this is what I'm about. You know what I liked about the Google authorship because <coughs> I actually learned this but from you is that whenever people are googling stuff not only do they see my stuff if they're connected to me they also see a little picture of me it's just like pounding the branding into them that not only is this is this my website because they might not re relate you know, the livebellingham.com, my city guide, or my homeforinvestment.com website, that it's Ben Kinney. But when you have the authorship shut up, it sure does. It just shows, here's the Ben's picture, right? So they, you, they used to do that on, on everything, and now they will only show that picture to people that are connected to you. But, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just a... It, which, which means connected to you, the way they looked at that, is through Gmail and Google Plus connections, right? Yep, you got it. Which is why Chad... We need Google Plus. Google we Plus will it, stay buddy. as a Google Plus will stay as a place like Bob saying for a clearinghouse. It will never they've stopped development and they will not be attempting to compete with the social networks the way they were. It'll hang out as a place for you to dump data and Google to know it's you. It'll never be a social network that they hoped it would become. And Bob has some articles on Google authorship and some articles on <clears throat> local SEO and, and we'll put that out in the newsletter that we send out to all you guys after this call if Bob's okay with it. Bob. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Active Rain. <clears throat> you know, I'm a huge proponent. That's how I met you. Was I was an Active Rain blogger. I ran into you at some freaky bar where everybody was wearing these red hooded things in the midnight in New York City. It was weird. But tell us about Active Rain real quick. Active Rain. It's a, a commu blogging community, right? We've got people sharing tips and tricks and, and trade secrets and that kind of thing with each other. They also have the ability to create blog posts on there that would potentially reach the search engines. And if somebody's just getting started blogging, you want to use it as a way to 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 get more traffic to your website to potentially get in front of more interested buyers and sellers. Active Rain would be an awesome place to start. Yeah, Active Rain. I got to tell you, is one of the best. Besides Brevity.com, ah, uh, forty dollar investments I've ever made in my real estate career. I but think it's only twenty nine now or something too. But really? nineteen. But Come just, on, you're giving this stuff uh, away. <laughs> okay. but, ju but just <laughs> like, so. but just like Brevity, Active Rain is a gym membership, which means if you sign up and you don't ever write anything, or if you sign up for Brevity and you don't actually put your listings in there, it's not going to work for you. The only cancellations we get from our products are when people don't actually use it. But that's yeah, like, same here. You can't cancel the gym membership when you don't actually go work out. That makes sense. Uh, Jeff, my homie, nope. my brother from another mother. 
<laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited for you for your presentation because you have the best slides. <laughs> that was a setup. Uh, we were set up. Set up. <laughs> uh, Jeff, Jeff, you're going to talk about technologies and apps, and and I know along with Chad and Bob, you're coming back to do some more calls with me because you're you're like a super smart guy. You're one of Inman's hundred most influential. You you've ran what technology for one of the largest real estate companies in the nation. Now you're doing some cool projects we'll talk about. But what what are these apps that I'm seeing on my screen? Easy Biz and, and Mile IQ? What? I've never, I've, yeah, honest, I've never heard of these. I'm gonna touch on a few different things today just to mix it up a little bit. But obviously there's there's a big disconnect when it comes to accounting. Most real estate agents are not good at it. We don't track anything, we don't have the time. So um, people are always asking for a good, you know, mileage tracking thing for their accountants and their business. So for Android, Easy Biz Plus app is a really good Android version. iPhone has Mile IQ, and it's really slick. You can actually even determine personal miles versus business miles. Um, you, it's a very smooth user interface, so it's clean on the mobile, and tracking and dollars and everything else is all accounted for right there. My accountant's going to love Mile IQ because I have an IQ, therefore I have an iPhone. Everybody in the audience, write that yeah. down. I was wondering why there's even an Android app. All right, sorry. Hey, <laughs> hey, I, I, Jeff, I'm I'm frustrated with with trying to get rid of video reviews. Actually, I'm kind of frustrated with video in general because I just I'm kind of video dumb. Uh, walk me through this bomb bomb experience. Sure. Well, first of all, let's just go back to have you actually tried to, you know, have you actually tried to get video reviews? I remember, you know, not that long ago in my days. You know, you try and get these after the closing videos. They're all happy, hopefully happy. And you know, you get the video camera out, and you say, "Listen, I would love a testimonial." And you, you get them in the conference room or in front of their house, and you want this cool little video. Except, let's face it, most of our customers are, their minds are a hundred places. They're not good on camera. And you get the whole, um, you know, you hit the red button. And they're like, "Well, no, you say something, honey. No, you start, honey." And I, all right, I'll say something. And it's a whole bunch of a hot mess. You really can't get good video. So I struggled with it until I found the solution with BombBomb, Bomb, I think is probably the easiest way to try and get a comfort level of shooting video without you actually having to shoot video. So if you haven't used BombBomb Bomb for all the other cool stuff it does, like video email and templates and providing video content via email, which is a nightmare in itself, BombBomb Bomb does it really good. So these are just some sample templates I have. And I want to just kind of narrow down to the actual solution that I have. So if you go down the next slide, um, just so I don't dwell on the whole, because I could talk about an hour alone on BombBomb's cool products. Um, what you don't know is, and if you haven't ventured into this part of BombBomb, because this was something I found after the fact, I didn't even use it myself because I didn't dive into it, it's got a way to create some cool forms, you know, custom forms where you can use them for lead capture and open houses and, you know, you want to get a review done. So what I did is we found out that you can create a form without having to know any code, um, something along the lines of what I've got here, you know, we can't thank you enough for doing business. We realize how um, stressful the purchase can be, but um, we appreciate you as clients and would love your help. And what you do is I put a little email box down the bottom here, but on the next slide, you could actually drag in, I will show you a video box, and this is slick. In your form, you could drag in a bomb bomb video box that when you send this to your customer or customers, however you want to do it, they open up the form. It's a live landing page form with a video box in it. It'll say to them, assuming they have a pretty a newer computer, not something that's you know 10 years old, it'll say, can we use your microphone and your camera while they're sitting in the comfort of their home or sitting in their office where they could think and focus and say something intelligent? And if you go to the next slide, it'll open up their actual video camera and they can shoot a video testimonial wherever they're sitting with whoever the kids could be in the background. They could be jumping up, waving hi to you. Whatever the coolness is, they do it at the convenience of their own home or office. And they could take as many takes as they want, but when it's saved, automatically comes right back into my BombBomb Bomb account as a video I can use, export, embed, and do what I want with it. Um, one thing of caution I always like to put in my form and I don't have it here, but just a word of caution there is I like to put um, a little disclosure in there. You know, I understand that I'm using this video um, for Jeff Lobb and his real estate company. I get permission to use it on any website, blah, 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 and let them check the box. Just so I have permission to use it everywhere because if I get a good one, 
Imagine if I could just get five or six good ones. I could really leverage the heck out of that, and I don't have to go out there and stretch out the camera. When I get that email, I can just do that recording right from my iPhone? Yes, you can actually do it from your iPhone. Yeah. That's, that's pretty slick. Brilliant. Do it from your iPhone, slick. do it from your desktop, as long as you can give permission to that. So, with the next one, I wanted is, to get really. Yeah, go ahead. You know what that is? Well, only because you sent it to me last night. Did you check it out? Does anybody have one of these yet? It's called the narrative. Anybody on the call have the narrative clip? The narrative clip. Now. The narrative. Yes no. Brian. Do not. Thank you. Brandy new. It's only a couple months old. I was like one of the first Kickstart geeks that signed up for it. Um, so okay. what, well, and the it's pretty slick. You just kind of it's a it's a five inch not a five inch excuse me uh, like a two by two little camera has no buttons on it. It's a five megapixel. Clip it on and it just takes pictures every thirty seconds of your day automatically. So it's a it's a life blogging photographic camera that just automatically takes photos so you don't have to think about it so imagine every 30 seconds no matter what you're doing you're taking a picture of something without touching I want, ev I want everybody on the call to hear how fast he went from five inches back down to two <laughs> I, I, I just want you guys to think about that for a minute shrink oh, yeah. itch. <laughs> All right, so so I so I wear my, my staff is cracking up right now so so I wear this somewhere and it, it takes a picture Yep. Every how often? Thirty seconds, all day. Every, all day. All day, man. There's no button to turn it off. The only way you turn it off is stick it in your pocket, and when it goes black, there's darkness. It will just turn off. It just just goes. You charge it maybe every three or four days. There is no chip, no SD card. You plug it in, goes through your laptop, stores it in the cloud, and you get to see all of the clips in like a little movie format. They're all clips on your iPhone or Android um, so that you can pick the ones you like and save them or discard them and they're all stored in the cloud. Privately? Privately. Privately you have your own login access. Because, it's got geolocation. Because I'm going to bend over and pull up my pants and you have no idea what could happen at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I think Please that's pull your pants up, Ben. Off. Please pull your pants up. <laughs> So I, I kind of like Maybe this for like this person. travel blogging, this kind of trying to find this good part of my day, and then just sharing that stuff. You know, like I uh, just went to Yellowstone last week with a whole bunch of great, amazing people, and um, I forgot to take pictures. I'm not very good at taking pictures, but that would have yeah. been cool. And you know what the cool part is? You actually can sweating, take a photo if you double tap it. You just take your finger and double tap the front. It will take a photo when you want one. But if you don't touch it, it, and no matter how it's turned, it can be turned sideways. It will always take the picture upright with geolocation so this, tagging too. It, it so shows you right where you're at when you took it. That's slick. Uh, it's called narrative clip. And about how much is it? Uh, like they started like two nineteen and two seventy nine somewhere around there. They got two different models. Cool. So what's Sightgeist? Sightgeist. Sightgeist is slick if you work with buyers. You know, buyers want information like right now. They, you know, you've got to be able to use that mobile device to give them something when they want it. So what's cool is the site guys takes a really hyper local approach to. I hate that word, hyper local. But it's it's a local. It. It's like one it's of Bob's favorite words. I don't know. Hyper local to me is like writing about a specific condo complex. That's hyper local. <laughs> like kind of played out. Well, I'll tell you, it's it is pretty. I'll tell you what my story where I found out how local it he really. He just called is. you hyper local, and you were you were burned out, Bob. I think he just yeah. referred to you as burned out. That's all right. <laughs> Still works. It works. I don't use right. local. The site guy is basically um, will we'll take exactly where you're located, deliver to you the age group of people right around you, how many children under age five, what the median average home is. Um, it'll give you the average rents. And if you go to the next slide, there's another five or six or seven or eight things it'll give you. I only have like five or six of them uh, played out here. If you go to the next one, it'll show you um, the top five restaurants based on reviews by Yelp. Pulls in the weather environment, the history of the homes, movie theaters surrounding by, and all that good stuff. So, um, Sightgeist is really good on the fly. And I'll tell you, we did a presentation at uh, we were like at AT and T Stadium somewhere, like right outside Austin, and there was a college right next door. And it came up, average age was like 19, <laughs> average homeowner like none. How many renters? You know, 95 percent. And it pulled all the college campus data. So it was really that local how it pulled the data. So 
pretty slick for buyers on the fly. You'll impress them. They're going to want the app, so make sure you tell them what it is. Tell them it's all about Sightgeist. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm trying to hit the next button. All right. Animoto, we've known about that for a while, but tell me, tell me why we should use it. I'll tell you why I'm bringing it back to life. Um, their, their new mobile platform is sweet. Um, I've used it for a long time, too, and kind of not, got, not let it die. It just kind of got quiet. Their new mobile platform is superb. On the fly, with your iPhone or, or, or iPad, um, if you go to the next screen, I've got some screenshots of it. You got um, you could literally take 5, 10, 15, 20 photos at your uh, listing. You could, as you open up the uh, app on the device, if we can um, go to the next slide there, Ben. Yep. He's just chugging along back there. Are you asleep? I'm, or? I'm, I'm responding to chat questions at the uh, same time. Uh, if yes, somebody has to run this entire machine, we don't he's just blowing me off, sit so back and, and, and doodle. All right, carry on. So check it out. This is like on an iPhone. You got all the pictures really simple. One touch, you select the buttons you want. All the pictures you want, you can drag and drop, drag and drop them with your finger. So you can maneuver them really smooth on a mobile device. The experience is really good. Go uh, one more slide. I could crank through slides better than Ben Kinney can, trust me. <laughs> You're noticing that. On the left-hand side, as easy as it is, you change the style or the theme. So you got themes that have falling rose petals. you got all the Animoto themes that are built in. They give you a good mobile selection. You pick the song. You can put text to it right on the mobile device. And within about 30 to 60 seconds, it creates that magical video all done right there. So I see this being used a couple different ways, how I would – take advantage of it. If I'm going on a two-step listing presentation, which I know a lot of you might like one-steppers, but if you got to go on a two, take 10, 15, 20 photos on the first appointment, get out to the car, head back to the office or in between when you're getting coffee, I create a quick Animoto right there from the mobile device and you could now text it to them or email it to them and I would text them one that just said, hey, thanks so much for your time. Looking forward to bringing you back some great marketing. Here's just a start. I'll see you Thursday. And you send them this freaking amazing little video. Because you know they're interviewing your two competitors in the same week. So you tag them with that. I'll tell you two more. You use one real good one on your listing presentation as part of your marketing. And show it to them on your mobile device. And third is the, the cool part is with buyers. Uh, if you ever saw one of these videos live, what I do with buyers is I take all the home pictures for a buyer. And I put my little mug shot about the third slide from the end. My little cutesy face with a nice little welcome home from your realtor and my name and contact and I put it in there because guess what when they're done buying the home and you send them a really cool video of their new property what are they going to do with it? Share it. They're sharing yeah, sure. it and guess what they can't do? They can't take me out of the video so I am in that video for life as long as they share that baby I am their realtor I'm embedded in it and it's a cool thing they're going to share virally for a long period of time. So I got smart. I didn't, I didn't know about their mobile app no, I was looking at this one you sent me last time, night. It was Virtual View App. This is uh, my favorite. It was this cool. Was Dude, how, how I wish I could do this live. Like it's in the App Store, and it's also in the Android stuff. Believe it or not, people, Android does have some apps that don't give you bugs. Yeah, right. man. This, this, this is amazing. Here's what happens. Um, you take a picture of a house. Now, you, you, buy, you, you download the app. It's on your phone. Um, you take a picture of a house. They have instructions, of course. You need to get a floor plan done. In some markets, they don't offer too many floor plans, but you can get a floor plan guy or gal to come out and do a floor plan layout for you. And you submit it to these guys, um, you know, PDF-wise, and they will create a virtual app tour for you, which is something that you're looking at right now. So if it's on a piece of marketing material, if it's on a, a brochure, anything like that that has that little code in the top right, you take your phone out and go to the next slide. It'll tell you to download the app, so it'll clearly have instructions. Well, maybe you took that slide out for me. It'll tell you to download the app, and when you open the app, and I did this on my laptop last night, or two nights ago, whenever the heck it was. So watch. I opened it up. Now I'm looking at my laptop screen through my iPhone. Now you see the top of the house. Now on the right-hand side, it's literally jumping off 3D as if I'm looking at the house standing in front of it. So what I did is, because I didn't have it on a piece of marketing material where I could just turn it, I just turned my my iPad, my Mac Air, excuse me, my Mac Air, go to the next slide and look closely. It's going to freak you out. This is not like magic. 
it literally jumps off the top of your screen and you can see the rooms from the top down inside and outside as if you're standing in it from all sides all you have to do is keep turning it and you'll see that full house in full 3d jumping off your screen or wow. off of your card or marketing or anything to me on a listing presentation as part of my marketing package we'll have most sellers just oogling over this kind of thing they're just gonna look at it and go how the heck do you do that what's the name of so, the app again virtual view app virtual view app yep it's you provide high-res photos a floor plan they create it for each house each listing I, I want to guess it's like 279 maybe for everything um, but the app is free and it'll even tell you on all the marketing material if you put it in a homes book it'll you put please download this app which is free and it's basically it scans it automatically and turns it into a 3d structure this should so, sound like a Tom Cruise movie oh man this is amazing so one of my favorites I spent some time with these guys I'm working with them individually now they're over in Spain and that's kind of it there Jeff I, I want to just talk to you real quick about what you're doing to help parents with children and families understand social media better because I thought that was a cool cool project you have going on tell me about that yeah it's launching literally like next Wednesday or Thursday so I'm really it could potentially be sooner but I'm thinking next Thursday is probably the day I'm gonna push it out um, it's part of Spark Tank Media, although I'm really heavy into the real estate space, I, I had an idea for outside the real estate space, and it's called socialforparents.com, socialforparents.com. And what it is is a video training series, kind of what I do for real estate but outside, on social media that their children and teens are using, a lot of it underground in a world that their parents don't know about, that's getting people suspended from schools and losing scholarships, and getting them in trouble all sorts of different ways but it goes so much deeper than that because kids don't understand what they're putting out there publicly that's gonna stay forever they don't realize that screenshots can be forwarded from an angry boyfriend or girlfriend to who knows where and we talk about everything from snapchat and kick and ask FM and um, Keek and all these crazy crazy apps they're using not just from a phone from an iPod touch from a secret account and what we teach the parents is not only what to ask, how to handle the situations, what types of things should you be looking for, you know, and all of these things. Because kids, God love them, I have a bunch of them myself, are getting in so much trouble, and they don't get it. They have too much power in the palm of their hands. So it's socialforparents.com will be a video training series for them all. I'm um, pretty excited about that. <clears throat> so uh, any other apps that Chad, Bob, Jeff, me that we want to add. I ask this question to the boys and the girls being Chad and Jeff and our cross dressing friend Bob. <laughs> Anything else that's new and cool? And I would start, guys, I've downloaded a couple new apps lately that I, I just really, really like. <clears throat> uh, number one is the Connected app, it's a new LinkedIn plugin. And the Refresh app, it is freaking amazing. Yeah, I got Refresh, I like that one a lot. And Tempo. It's like the yep. best calendar app I've ever seen in my life. So there's some cool things coming out there. So those would be one ones I would add add to this conversation. Uh, Chad, anything you like right now? No, I'm. I like to keep it simple when it comes to it. My screen has as few apps as possible. My phone's got as few apps as possible. I stick with the basics. Okay, Bob. You know what? This isn't an app, but maybe the coolest thing that I saw at Inman was the Matterport camera. Have you guys, Ben? Did you see that, or Jeff Lop? Yeah, did you come across that, that Matterport? Yeah, it was pretty crazy. I mean, that it's expensive, right? It's like a forty-five hundred dollar camera or something, but it takes the most ridiculous. It basically turns it into a three D walk through the house tour. I mean, it is. It, it's the coolest thing I've seen in real estate in terms of like being able to tour somebody through a house. I, I mean, since the internet. Just yeah, a tad for slick. Good. It's not one of those cheap apps you get on your phone, though. It's it's pretty pretty uh, advanced. Yep. Anything else you'd add to that, real quick, Jeff? Um, I mean, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, I'm just looking now to see what are my go-to's. I mean, if you're actually, have you seen the new LinkedIn Connected? Yeah, I, I love that one, man. Yeah, I mean, it's I, really I pretty slick. Day. It's called Connected by LinkedIn. It's a really great deep dive on the individuals that are on LinkedIn. It's a visual picture deeper into what they do and know and when their birthdays are it's something if you're going into a meeting it's a real nice quick slick one to have 
Um, yeah, I, I don't know if you guys, it's just not really an app. Uh, Gecko board we're using for our team and our software businesses. That's that's pretty cool. Um, for collaboration? It, it creates a dashboard, like a screen, where you can pull the numbers from Google Docs or spreadsheets to know, you know, up to the minute, you know, how many pending souls, listings, all that sort of stuff that you have, or how many sales you got, or it, it, it's pretty slick. So, uh, Jeff, let's, why don't you go first? What did you learn from the other speakers today, or thoughts or comments? I learned that um, some validation to some of the things um, some of us have been talking about too with Chad's about the, the auto posting. It's good to hear it refreshing, almost said in the exact words we say it too, so that there's confidence in we're giving the right message out there. Um, the, uh, the whole part about being social on the SEO side, um, you know that SEO matters but being very specific. I, he's right. I see a lot of people getting all over the place. They want to talk about whatever comes to their mind, which doesn't really keep a good specific focus on things. And I also am a big fan and agree with the whole Facebook business page downturn that um, I think it's a big challenge right now, and I think they're going to have to do something about it. But until then, most of my activity also agrees with them. It falls on my personal page because we're kind of human there. So, so somebody just asked, do we have a good app to track expenses? Uh, expenses? Well, QuickBook. Anybody? I use QuickBooks, I use QuickBooks online. It's really sweet. Uh, it's a sweet app. It's not free, but it's it's a QuickBook online app. It's right. The app is really pretty. You can create do, expenses, billing. Do you guys use Mint? No, I Mint, did for a little Mint. while. I, I think Mint's a pretty interesting. Are I, they keeping it or are yeah, they getting rid of them? Go ahead. I, I thought they were getting rid of one of them. I don't know if it was Mint or something else was a, was dissolving. Could be, could be. Chad, what what do you got? What do you got today to share with us? Uh, that there, are, that man knows a lot of apps over there that I need to be adding to uh, to my business, and that when it comes to SEO, no one knows it like Bob. So. He's he's the expert when it comes to that stuff in this industry. That's the one thing I know for sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. And you taught a lot of SEO. I, I put you up at the top of the list of people that know stuff, Chad. And I picked Bob, that guy's brain. brain. That's why. <laughs> um, what well, you know, I, the Facebook business page to me, I, I didn't. Maybe I've seen that six percent number before, but then that's a real eye opener, I think, especially for anybody out there that's focusing a lot on their business page. I mean, that would be something that might make me just take an immediate about face and, and really start focusing on my personal page. Uh, I mean, Jeff, Rob, every single time I hear this guy, I end up with three new apps on my phone. I probably end up using one of them. But, I mean, um, okay, if you want to be more efficient, the, how many guys we're, we're – I mean, I, I'm just as guilty as anybody. I'm on my phone probably three to one and how much I'm on my computer these days. So, you know, really figure out how you can get – just organized on the go, and you guys are always on the go, right? So those apps on your phone are just ridiculously important. Yeah, and you don't need a lot of them. It's really – people think I'm just kind of some app, app freak. Um, it's really not about <laughs> that. It's really, it's really the, it's utilizing the mobile devices in a way that's going to deliver what you want and what the customer wants, period. I love that, the, the one that you did Animoto there, of just literally after you've left the person within an hour or 20 minutes or you've got something awesome back to them. I, mean, I think that's very powerful. Yeah, it's how you use it, man. That's the point of it. Well, cool. Uh, we got to thank a couple of people, but I still have more to say, so don't go away. Hey, thank Happy Grasshopper for always keeping people invited to our show and and connecting with us and being such great partners. And we're happy to you know start talking about some integrations in the future that which makes these products easier to use through integrations right through Brivity. But if you want a deal. Dan will give you a deal at happygrasshopper.com forward slash Ben. By the way, I don't get paid anything. If you want brevity, they've messaged you a thousand times. Figure out how to do it. If you want a city guy to sell our site, you, you, you kind of we, – we told you where to get it. But type into the chat box if you want demos on anything, if you forgot to mention that today. Ask for the simple seller solution. We can bundle some products together. And now we're going to talk about winning. Everybody on the call, our audience, Type in some suggestions for webinars you want to hear the rest of the year. I need some ideas, some guests, some topics, some things that we can dig deeper into. I need them right now. And if we pick yours, you're going to get something special. If we pick your topic, idea, and remember, be smart about it. We like to make funny tiles, titles. Guys, like I said, I am luckier than a guy who picks his nose and comes out with a cupcake to have all three of you on one call at once. I couldn't be happier than a guy that can poop 
puppies, if you get what I'm saying. This has been I, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> you don't? I'm just scared. <laughs> you don't, you don't understand that analogy? I, I mean, I mean, let's break it down. Let's break it down for a second. Then, imagine you're having a bad day, and you're walking around. You're like, "Oh, today's horrible. I got fired. Girlfriend's beating up on me. Life's bad, right?" And you're like, "Poof!" And you poop a golden retriever puppy. How happy would you be if you just did that? Like, I mean, who's gonna take him to the hospital for them? <laughs> it, just, <laughs> <laughs> it just makes you so happy. Yeah, I think so happy. Ben, in between that and the picture of Bob, I'm not sleeping tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Amen to pick that. Your nose. Pick your nose, come out with a cupcake. That's all I have to say. Uh, guys, uh, thank you. Honestly, you're all three good friends of mine and uh, been friends of mine for a long time. Excited to have you guys back on the call for more in-depth. It's hard to put three geniuses on one call for an hour. So thank you guys for doing that. Everybody on the on the call, you have more questions, you want demos, you have ideas for webinars, Keep tightening the chat box. We'll keep that going for the next 15, 20 minutes. But i got to let these guys go. They have a job to do. Chad, Jeff, Bob, peace. Thanks for coming. You guys are awesome. Thanks, Thank Ben. You. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.